um, Governor Bush. Governor, Hillary, recent, Hillary Clinton recently said that if we had another financial crisis like the one in 20, 2008, she wouldn't bail out the banks. Would you? We're not, we shouldn't have another financial crisis. What we ought to do is raise the capital requirements so banks aren't too big to fail. Dodd-Frank has actually done the opposite, totally the opposite, where banks now have higher um, concentration of risk and assets and the capital requirements aren't high enough. We are serious about it. We would raise the capital requirements and lessen the load on the community banks and other financial institutions. This vast overreach has created a huge problem for our country, and Hillary Clinton wants to double down on that. I was in Washington, Iowa about three months ago talking about how bad Washington, D.C. is. It was, get the kind of the, anyway. We had, uh, I was, and I talked to a banker there. This is a bank that had $125 million of assets, four branches. Their compliance cost because of Dodd-Frank went from $100,000 to $600,000 in a two-year period. The net effect of that is, and they had, not, they had not one loan that went bad during the financial crisis. They knew, their, they knew their borrowers, they gave back to the community, they were engaged in the community, and imagine America without its community banks. Well, that's what's happening because of Dodd-Frank. That's, that's my worry. My worry is that the real economy has been hurt by the vast overreach of the Obama administration. And Hillary Clinton, she wants to double down on that. She wants to create even more so. She is a captive of the left of her party to the point now where she, is, she was for the trade uh, agreement in the Pacific Agreement, now she's against it. She was hinted she was for the XL pipeline, now she's opposed to it. All the things that would create sustained economic growth, she's now doubling down against it. Go Governor, but can I just quickly say, did, you can't seriously guarantee that there won't be another financial crisis, can you? If you could, if you were serious about Ever? it. Ever? There'll never be another financial crisis? No, I can't say that, but I can say if you created higher capital requirements, that's the solution to this. Not having concentration of assets, the bigger banks now have more and more control over, over the financial assets of this country, and that is the wrong approach to take. Do Dr. Carson, if I may, just on that point, despite measures taken, uh, as the governor says, uh, since the crisis to make the financial system safer, the major banks in the U.S., many of them are actually bigger than ever. Assets held by J.P. Morgan Chase, for example, the, the very largest bank, have increased by nearly 40% to over $2.6 trillion. Do you think J.P. Morgan and the other big banks should be broken up? Well, I think we should have policies that don't allow them to just uh, enlarge themselves at the expense of smaller entities. And certainly some of the policies, some of the monetary and Fed policies that we're using, makes it very easy for them, makes it very easy for the big corporations, quite frankly, at these very low interest rates to buy back their stock and to drive the price of that up artificially. Those are the kinds of things that led to the problem in the first place. And I, I think this all really gets back this, to this whole regulation issue, which is creating a very abnormal situation. This country was declared its independence in 1776. In less than 100 years, it was the number one economic power in the world. And the reason was because we had an atmosphere that encouraged entrepreneurial risk-taking and capital investment. Those are the fuels that drive it. And what we've done now is let the creep of regulation turn into a stampede of regulations, which is involved in every aspect of our lives. If we can get that out, it makes a big difference. And even for the average person, every single regulation costs money. And it's, and it's shifted to the individual. So, and it hurts the poor and the middle class much more than it does the rich. They go into the store and they buy a bar of soap, it costs 10 cents more, they notice it. And the middle class, when they come to the cash register, they have a whole cart full of things that cost five, 10 or 15 cents more, they notice it. It is hurting the poor. Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton won't tell you that that's the thing that's really hurting the middle class and the poor. They'll say it's the rich, take their money, but that won't help. You can take all of the richest money and it won't make a dent in the problem that we're having. We have to come back to the fundamental principles that made America great. Just to be clear, just, just, just to be clear, then you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't favor breaking up the big banks. You think they're they're big enough, they're okay as they are. As big I as would as have policies that wouldn't allow that to occur. 
I don't want to go in and tear anybody down. I mean, that doesn't help us. But what does help us is to stop tinkering around the edges and fix the actual problems that exist that are creating the problem. In the Can I just add what he's Thank saying? Because he's right on point there. You know why these banks are so big? The government made them big. The government made them big by adding thousands and thousands of pages of regulations. So the big banks, they have an army of lawyers, they have an army of compliance officers. They can deal with all these things. The small banks, like Governor Bush was saying, they can't deal with all these regulations. They can't deal with all, they cannot hire the fanciest law firm in Washington or the best lobbying firm to deal with all these regulations. And so the result is the big banks get bigger, the small banks struggle to lend or even exist, and the result is what you have today. And in Dodd-Frank, you have actually codified too big to fail. We have actually created a category of systemically important institutions, and these banks go around bragging about it. You know what they say to people with a wink and a nod? We are so big, we are so important that if we get in trouble, the government has to bail us out. This is an outrage. We need to repeal Dodd-Frank as soon as possible. Let me, uh, let me also say, Jerry, Jerry, let me also say that Jeb is, uh, what Jeb is talking about with the big banks is to force them to to reserve their capital, people who invest in, and they hold their capital, so that if the bank goes down, the people who are invested in the bank are the ones that pay. That's what he's trying to say. Secondly, I'll tell you about Wall Street. There's too much greed. And the fact is, a free enterprise system is a system that's produced the greatest wealth for the world. But you know, Michael Novak, the great Catholic theologian, says that a free enterprise system that is not underlaid with values and we should all think about the way we conduct our lives. Yes, free enterprise is great, profits are great, but there have to be some values that underlay it and they need a good ethics lesson on Wall Street on a regular basis to keep them in check so we, the people, do not lose. Thank you. Gerard, can I comment on that? On that, you know, Jerry, your first question. I do 